Hey everybody, one of the GMG Review. Today we're taking a look at Veritwood, a folk horror skirmish game written by Mike Crutchett. Now, I've been watching Veritwood develop for a long time because Mike has been posting pictures of his miniatures for a long time and I thought they were cool. So I hit like and follow on his Facebook page probably like a year ago and then his miniature collection developed into this. And that is probably why I'm so excited about this game. This happened about as organically as a horror folk skirmish game can happen where you have a fan of a genre, become obsessed with that like 28 movement of making miniatures just cause and then have that coalesce into writing a game. Um, so about as naturally as that can happen, Mike had a game in his head and decided he needed to go out into the world. And he was kind enough to give me this complimentary review copy printed out um, when we were at Adepticon, so I figured I'd review it. Now this is available right now on DriveThruRPG, you can click the link in the description and go check it out. Um, but this is a horror game. Uh, and thematically speaking, I am going to give you guys a proviso like a PSA at the beginning. There are serious horror themes in here, things that are disturbing and uncomfortable and they are baked right into the game mechanics and the language used to describe everything. There are no good guys here. You're living in a world like, if Morkborg has like kind of a, uh, I don't wanna say like a comedy element to it, but at least like a tongue in cheek element to it, Veritwood takes that to the grim side. This is like the witch or um, any of those sort of like demonic possession movies like Hereditary where, there's no like light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Terrible things are happening. Uh, and I think the tone, the layout, everything Mike's done here gives it that feeling and you should approach it with that in mind. So if you are a fan of horror, particularly folk horror, like The Ritual, um, was it The Ritual, the one with the backpackers in like, Nor in, like the Norwegian, Scandinavian forest? I think that was the one, The Ritual. Um, if you're a fan of that type of like movie or um, content or like game, then this would be for you. But if that's if you're if you're out if you need your core horror to be slightly more like Space Hulk like sanitized with science fiction or something like that then I would go the other direction. Um, the idea here is that you will need a few miniatures, about four miniatures, to represent your cult. You probably need different miniatures to represent your um, summons, right? And you are the survivors in a wood where basically the world has ended. <laughs> so. Everything, everything has exploded, time has ended, you need a three by three table to play on, I need some D10s to play on, and yeah. And you're telling the tale of Veritmir, the womb of creation and the protector of the forest. And Veritmir was basically a god that lived under the trees and he was full of love and light and happiness and then he died. Uh, and Ethos was sent to wage a war against his siblings. He slayed his brothers and sisters one by one. His blood soaked the earth. Uh, and then Veramir went for his dead children and the mistakes he'd made. It said that one day Veramir vowed to make the race of man his children. He would protect us and provide us with splendor. And yeah, and, and then it, it goes bad. So. Veritwood is a vast and ancient forest spanning the entire southern region of the continent. Despite villages and hamlets peppering the Veritwood, the forest is a hostile and treacherous place to explore, and the extreme isolation of the Ruman has made a region has made Veritwood home to various macabre superstitions and rumors. And for hundreds of years, the people of Veritwood have practiced a shared worship of the god Voldus. But one year ago, the sound of bells rang across the sky. The sound of bells seemed to permeate the veil itself for two full days, then they went silent. Crops began to wither, trees decayed, and the sound of life trickled away to a whisper. The forest had become a tomb for those unlucky souls who survived the first month. So basically, some believed that Voldus had abandoned them, while others believed that the god was dead. No matter what's true, the people of the Veritwood had begun to look for answers in the things they do not fully understand. They've turned to the dark things of old and lay in slumber in the woods in hope of salvation, and this is the beginning of the end. So basically you turn away from the god of the wood, who is probably dead, and start worshipping the weird creepy crawlies in the corners. And that's where you take off. You're a cult. You're surviving in this post-apocalyptic rotting forest because you've allied yourself with some eldritch being who is giving you the ability to survive. Um, and that's it. It uses an opposed dice pool system, kind of similar to the Lord of the Rings, where you're rolling a pool of dice and then picking the highest result to compare. So if you had a strength and you're making a melee attack, you'd roll your two strength versus their two defense. If you rolled the highest of your dice pool, then you would um, be the one that would win and would, uh, would successfully gain the thing. Now, while you're trying to fight each other with your four models in this three by three table in a weird wood, you're also trying to complete rituals to gain the favor of your god. Now, there's some rituals that you select I think you select four of them when you build your cult. You want them to reflect what your god does. Uh, those rituals basically can be performed in, in opposed, like as opposed to doing other actions. So like you can move and start praying to like do your ritual, or sorry, do your ritual. You can pray, you can make range attacks, melee attacks, and you can run. There's a two action uh, turn sequence. 
Um, and when you get zero health, you're taken out. So every time a model is activated, you go back and forth, activating models, and they can make up two points worth of actions. There's there's certain things that allow you to go over that. Uh, you move. If you move, you move six inches. You can go prone and move half rate. You can run and move 1.5, so you can run nine. Uh, you make a melee attack if you're in contact with another model, or your weapon range, sorry, because your weapon's going to have various ranges, like spears and stuff, can attack further. Uh, and you roll your strength versus their defense, typically. Now, it's all model agnostic, so whatever cool horror models you can come up with can represent the guys that you have in your cult. You can shoot with ranged actions, you can perform rituals, and each ritual will have a ritual point cost that must be subtracted from the cult's shared ritual points to perform. If your cult does not have enough, um, have the required ritual points to perform it, the model must not perform it. Most rituals must be performed on your model's turn as an action, but some can be performed as a free action and don't cost anything. Um, when you pray for two actions, you stop doing anything and spend two actions. You perform a pray action, uh, you roll a d10, and the result is added to your ritual points total. So like, typically you're gonna try and balance your models activating and fighting each other with someone like chanting and praying and trying to get the god's favor while you do it. So now you get 300 favor to recruit your, your forces with at the beginning, but you also have to choose your deity and your ritual's trait. Um, and this will be the thing that basically like defines who you are. So is your god into strength? Your god feels a, feeds off violence and pain? Are they into dexterity? So they're nimble and, um, and sly? Are they intelligent? They outsmart people? Are they defensive? And uh, they bleed not for man or god. Uh, when you start off, you have 300 favor to spend. You learn more favor as you play, and this allows your cultists to grow and change over time. It's free to indoctrinate a fresh new member of your cult. The cult starts with a value of strength of one in all of their stats um, and their defensive stat. Uh, and then new cultist starts with 10 health. When performing uh, your cult, you can inc indoctrinate up to four cultists. Your cult can never exceed four cultists, and if someone dies or you kick them out, then you get a new one for free. Uh, you can increase your stats. It costs 50 favor to increase your stats by one, um, and you can never exceed five. So this allows you to like tailor your cultists at the beginning, and then you can increase your health for 75 points by a factor of five for each one. So if you want to make one of your cultists a leader with your 300 favor, you could like nudge their strength and their intelligence higher if you wanted, or all three of their stats right for 150. So you can spend half to make your leader like stat out. Um, and even their strength if you wanted to for the other 150 and then have three just like regular Joe cultists And then you can also buy them equipment for extra favor So you might want to save some favor on the side there to give them like mort shrooms and incense uh, Mounts for honor favor, you know mounted on like uh, weird like forest mounts And then you can also buy weapons like a improvised light blade heavy blade light blunted heavy blunted a pole a bow or a crossbow. So you're balancing off increasing your stats at the beginning with also uh, buying your equipment and items and stuff. And then when you start off, you gotta perform, you have to know four rituals. Typically you're gonna take one of the zero cost ones that's available all the time and is tied to a stat. And then another three that give you like different stuff that however you identify the god that you're worshiping, whatever eldritch being you're worshiping. Um, as like a, a, a skill. And you're building up your, your ritual points to then perform these against each other over the course of the game. So. I like this so far because the game, it, you, you design, it, it fits that 28 feel. You design your miniatures that you like, you use the game rules to then stack them out in a way that feels appropriate for how they look. And then if you have like a common theme of like the, it's kind of like that uh, video game, um, is it Blood of the Lamb? The one with the, the evil lamb cult that's in the jungle. Like a, I saw it on Nintendo and I was like, what is this? Cult of the Lamb, I think it's called. You can basically design something that's thematically appropriate for what you have and you don't need a ton of models. Um, so things like uh, being able to see sight of the design, you can add your decks, uh, add one to your decks for the next range action, it would cost you three RP, and you're gonna have lots of RP to do it. So for one action, you're basically unlocking these rituals, um, and you've got this common pool of ritual points that you're building up over the course of the game to do so with. Now your zero cost ones are things like cannibalism. Uh, every time you take someone out of action in melee, you gain five favor, because you just take a bite out of them. Devout. Uh, it's a passive ritual. At the beginning of every round, gain a ritual point for every model in your cult still on the table. That's a super powerful one. Um, summons won't get it for you, though. You can be hardened. Whenever um, a model must roll on the injury table, you can pick two dice and pick the preferred result. Or then survivalist. During the scouting phase, you can draw two cards and pick the preferred result, then reshuffle the unused card. That's for the exploration part later on. So uh, a nice, like, tailoring your cult system. Again, this all comes back to the idea that Mike likes making these kinds of miniatures and wants you to be able to have that experience of making them the way you want and then having them perform in a way on the tabletop that feels like they they would do based on how they look. Uh, and they go up in cost, so like Revenge, uh, the ritual's performed as a free action after taking damage from a melee or ranged attack. The next successful one will deal an additional three damage <laughs> against them, so if you attack the guy that hurt you, then you get to do bonus three damage. 
Um, at one with the woods, uh, to perform this ritual, the model must be in forested terrain. Move this model for free to any other forest, see if they're like a teleport, like a nightcrawler kind of bamf. Hoofed form, you gain goat legs, uh, you can heal. So all kinds of cool stuff. And again, you can learn new ones as you advance and stuff, and that'll come in later on. But you can also summon things, little demons, big demons, 16 or 20. So you have to build up to do that, but you can get third party miniatures on the table. So your four cultists could be joined by some kind of big thing. And are like, you want to have six probably models eventually, because you have your cultist, then you'll have a small thing you could summon and a big thing that you could summon too. Uh, terrain, so some like core special terrain features like open blocking and cover terrain. But then also terrain could be like, Forced area train or haunted. It could be hallowed ground that you can't go into. So like things that are resisting the Veritwood's curse, burning or climbable, cursed, poisonous and vicious. That's a nice add. Like in a game like this, where you're not using too many miniatures, the theme needs to permeate everything. So having like these bits of interspersed terrain, one, it gives you the idea of doing like cool terrain pieces like the skull full of candles, right? Um, or like gibbets and, and bells and stuff like that. But two, it gives you like an interactive feel to the table itself. And I feel like at this scale, that's important. Uh, AI creatures can appear. And of course, that's where this like folk horror element comes in. You get these big crazy monsters, like a bear that's all like jacked up from the decay of the forest. A flying beast and imp. They're all relatively generic, so you can make whatever you want. Something in the woods. Some weird horned ghost. Reanimated and greater reanimated, so like zombies. Giant spiders, Ethicans, like a big like cursed troll, a madman. So I think you can just have like a pig-headed slasher in here. And these are all Mike's models. These are fantastic. You can see where his brain's at with this. Ghosts. Uh, and then you get a campaign. So the forest is in chaos as dark cults fight in the service of their gods. Every kill and every relic collected and every horrible deed done is committed and imbibes these dark deities with power. The followers hope that one day their gods will be strong enough to break the seal and walk amongst the forest once again. It's not the big good gods dead. All these little gods are like crawling by the cracks. So the campaign sequence, basically, you, you build a 300 po um, favor campaign. Points, favor, same thing. Uh, and then you play encounters, check your win conditions, check for in injuries, explore the forest, spend your favor, and repeat. So you're basically just playing until um, your cult is, is, is leveled up and powerful and you're sick of playing them, you can make a new cult. So relic hunts, places of power that you go to, which have like special creatures and stuff on them. Um, all of these basically like are designed to be thematic to um, to like the, the idea that this forest is infested with cults. Now there is a bunch of additional stuff in the new um, expansions he's put out, more encounters and stuff like that. And I think the idea is that he's going to continue to release like new cool miniatures and, and encounters and themes. Um, through a supplemental material, because this is this is a nice, trim, concise core rule book, uh, and it's it's the adding to it, I think is the fun for him, where he gets to make new models and new ideas and keep exploring it. Uh, it's got a post game injury table, so like a d10 roll, you, you might die, you might not die, and then a nice card driven explore the forest. You got to spend a cultist out to explore every turn, and if you roll if you do a number card, something can happen. All the face cards have special encounters, like uh, you find a dead village full of rotting animals or. Um, you come upon a tall, pale man named Holt. <laughs> um, the camp clubs, as you top a ridge, you see ominous storm clouds. Um, the storm catches up with you during your next encounter, and all the max ranges are halved, and you can't take run actions. So just cool, like, narrative things that will take place over the course of the campaign in between game rounds. And that's it. So there it is. A nice core book, 60 pages, full color. It's available on DriveThruRPG right now. Uh, again, not a big ask to try this game out. Four cult models, maybe a couple of like summonables that are like appropriate to whatever your cult theme is. Uh, some monsters, a three by three table, and some weird folk horror terrain, like weird woods and weird um, like uh, cottages and stuff like that. So I'm pumped to give this a go. I feel like this is gonna have uh, like forbidden, so like it's a bit more procedurally generated than the more bespoke scenarios like Forbidden Psalm has, but the same kind of tenor and definitely darker. So I love the idea of like to decrepit humans living in like a post-apocalyptic fantasy wood uh, with things just continuously going wrong. And I'm excited that Mike has given himself, like I like the design space of this book where um, he's got like a nice core mechanic so I can try the game out with this one purchase and then he's gonna layer on additional content for me to get excited about. So I'll definitely convert up a cult. We'll see what we wanna do. I'll see who I'm gonna recruit to do it. But if you wanna volunteer, you can jump in the GMG um, 
guest calendar uh, Facebook group and yeah, give it a go. Uh, and we'll try some Veritwood. So big thanks to Mike for giving me the game's uh, printout so I can check it out. And for you guys for watching, we'll see you for more GMG reviews in the future. Ton of mash. Have a Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Game of Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.